Good morning, everybody. It's Karen here from Montana. I wanted to say hi and come on. It's been a minute since I recorded one of my nitty videos. Um, things have gotten a little crazy here. I've gotten really busy between real estate and um, I have a part-time job at the local Safeway. I'm a checker, so I got a little crazy, but um, I wanted to catch up with you guys. So I've got a spread of things in front of me that I wanted to share with you. And I'm gonna try to do regular nitty casts maybe every two or three weeks. Um, I may not always have a finished object, but I can show you my progress, um, things I've ordered and purchased and received. So I think it'll be fun. Um, what I did want to tell you is I've been knitting, August will be about two years. So June, I picked up my first um, uh, uh, fiber art I picked up was crochet while I was living overseas in Germany. And that's probably coming up on two years now that I've been crocheting and it hasn't been a steady crochet. Once I started knitting, I kind of went to that. But I haven't knit a whole or crocheted a whole bunch of things, but the things I do have, I decided that every couple of podcasts, um, I would show you one. So this is one of the first things I ever made. It is um, the tulip scarf. It is a pattern that was designed by Dinah of the Knitting Place in um, Port Washington, New York. I will link everybody below that I mentioned, the stores, the, the makers, everything. And it's made in Koigu yarn that I absolutely love. It's really warm. It's made in merino wool. So let me show it to you up close and personal. This was crocheted the long way. So I like cast, I uh, did a chain of like 300 and something, which was a new adventure. But so there it is. That's pretty much the colors. It's three different colors that were rotated through. And it is super long and it's got the scalloped ends. Let's see. This is gonna be like the second thing I show you that's really super long. Hang on, let's do it that way. Going, going, <laughs> going. And the other scalloped end is there. So that was one of my um, very first finished objects. And I'm going to leave it off because um, it's warm here. Um, even for Montana, it is um, it's 61 degrees. So that means in the house, it's a little warmer than normal. So I made some notes in my book. And uh, the first thing I wanted to discuss, um, well, let's talk about these earrings. These earrings are uh, yarn skeins. They're, they're done up, they're actually yarn, fingering weight yarn. They're by the Impossible Yarn Shop. She's in Canada. Uh, I've got two different pair and I absolutely love them. Let's see if you can see that. Those are fabulous. Um, so I don't do a lot of uh, accessories. I wear usually the same necklace and rings. So my earrings are what sets me apart. So let's start with um, some works in progress. I have several, but these are the ones that are active right now. I have my spring thing, which was a free pattern from Espace Tricot. Um, I'm almost done. <clears throat> it is knit in... Um, KZ knit, K zip knits, uh, Kelsey in her yarn. Uh, do I have the ball band? Oh, let me see. There it is. So this is her. She is also one of the podcasters on the White Coast Wolves podcast, um, a podcast out of Vancouver, Washington. They have a store, White Coast Wolves. Um, this is her Giraboldi sock. What was the colorway on this one? I don't remember. I just saw it and I absolutely love the color which is odd for me because I'm not pink. So the shawl started down here and it grew and grew and grew and then it decreased and I'm almost at the end of the decreases. So I'm excited because this is pretty big. And then what you have to do is this is the shawl. I'm not giving away anything because this is a free pattern from Espace Trico, which is a yarn shop in um, Montreal, Canada. So this is what it is. And where they have the gold, I'm going to be doing the purple. This is a Suburban Stitcher. It's one of her uh, uh, mini yarns. So I think that'll go great. It'll be around the end. So I will take pictures and put them up on Instagram because the instructions are when, as soon as I get finished here, I have to get down to three stitches and then um, bind off and then wet block it. Um, and once that dries, then I can do the um, outside edging. This is gonna be a gift to a friend. Um, this is in my naughty knitting bag. Um, if you are virginally ears or eyes or offended easily, look away. 
This is the inside. I thought this was awesome. I need a good laugh. And look at that. Skeletons. So, um, how did I find this one? I was watching um, the YouTuber Shivis, Sh uh, Chevy Stuff podcast, and I saw her, and so I went and ordered. So that is whip number one. Hang on, I need a sip of coffee here. My Polish pottery coffee mug from when I was living overseas. I went to Poland and got a bunch of Polish pottery. Yeah, um, I don't drink normal coffee. If you want to know about the coffee I drink, um, there's a video <clears throat> here on the channel where I discuss all about my coffee and how I make it. So my other work in progress, oh, I didn't bring my flax, is my socks. I decided I wanted to learn how to knit socks because I have a lot of sock yarn. I love socks. And this is no easy feat. <laughs> Let me, literally. Um, so this is also suburban stitcher yarn. Um, what is the colorway on this one? I don't know if I have the ball band. I think I lost the ball band because it's been wound up for a while. But anyway, um, the pattern or recipe I'm using is the one from Meanwhile at the Castle. Um, they're the ones that talk to me the most. I really totally understood um, their, how they explained this. So I've already got my cuff and I'm working on the leg. So these are, these are cuff down. I'm obviously using Magic Loop. I am not thrilled with these needles. These are Addies. Um, I will be sending these to a friend of mine who loves her Addies. I definitely prefer the memory and the cord of the Chagu Red Lace. So last night I picked these up and I just, just sitting watching like half an hour of, of, of a documentary, I just did that really quick. And I carry these around with me and I really love them. I did order a book, I'll show it to you here. I just wanna put these away so it doesn't slip off. I keep these with me so when I have breaks at, um, at Safeway, I'm gonna start working on them. I wanna venture into this. Two at a time socks, I can see where um, you get the socks in here where you only finish one because that's hard. Um, that's also me. So I'm going to try two at a time socks next time and we'll see where that goes. It's a great book. Just got it. Uh, one of my friends recommended it and I think it's fabulous. So we're going to try that next time. Um, I'm going to finish these socks though. So that is another whip that's in progress. I have my flax sweater here. Oh, where's my flax? I think it's in this bag here. Are you in here? Are you in here? Nope, you're not in there. I don't know where my flax is, so I'll have to do that um, another time. That's a sweater, and I've, it scares me, so I kind of haven't been working on it, but I started it. So maybe my mojo will come back and I'll wanna do it. What I am working on also is, and it's in my Lolo Did It bag, is I'm working on this pattern that Casa Pinka put out um, at the beginning of this COVID, and it's called Hope and Breathe. Actually, this might be a, a lot about Casa Pinka this time. It is this shawl here, which you can see it's called um, Hope and Breathe, Breathe and Hope. Um, it's a free pattern, so I'm not really giving anything away. And it's knit with uh, two different yarns, and there should be some contrast. I am using these two by Asylum Fibers. Stephanie, she's an indie dyer out of New York, and I can actually tell you, this is American Graffiti. I absolutely, as much as I don't like pink, I love this. Let me look at the ball band. Oh, sorry, Creepy Graffiti, not American Graffiti, movie time. And this is called High Tide. And let me show you the, and I'm carrying the yarn as I go, which is also a new skill, but this is Stephanie's ball band, so you can see her. Get her name right. There you go. Ew, that was poopy. There we are, much better. Asylum Fibers. She actually lives really close to my parents in New York. So here it is. I stopped just as I was getting ready to hit section two. And I'm probably gonna pick it up again really soon. I need to finish the spring thing and then I'll start this again. It was a really fun knit. These are new stitches to me. So I like, you know, I like to have something that's really vanilla and easy while I'm watching TV to knit on or crochet on, and then something to challenge me. You know, every new project, um, I wanna learn something new. So there's this. My little marker is a little Caesar. That's a bird too. You can see that's its beak. 
Let's see. There you go. It's his beak. So anyway, so that's it. Um, these are on my Knit Picks needles, and I love them so much. I'm really, those Addies, ugh, I think that's one of the reasons I'm not really knitting on the sock so much. It's because those needles. Um, what else? So I have the socks, and um, I have a couple of long-term works in progress, and they're blankets. Um, one of the blankets I started right after I moved back from Germany. No, I finished that one. This was about a year ago. And the problem with knitting here, uh, like a blanket here, is it gets big and then it's on your lap. So I try, I don't really work on them in summer. So this is a crochet one. Um, this is a pattern by Attic24. It's free on her website. Um, and she's got a lot um, of patterns. And this is huge. I am knitting it. I'm crocheting it, actually, on a size G hook. These are my favorite. They're by Clover, the Amores. I just love the way they feel. And this blanket is huge, so I'm gonna take a step back and show it to you. It's called the Sweet Pea Blanket. And so let's go back. So you can see how long it is. I'm hoping I'm getting it because I can't really see. Look at all those ends. So the blanket is huge. And it's really not quite done yet. I still have about four more sections to go. And sorry about that, the yarn went running. And the warmer it gets here, the less I really, really want to work on it because it sits on your lap. So that I may um, put away until the fall. Um, but we'll see. Uh, we've had it pretty chilly here. It hasn't been exactly warm, warm. So uh, I may take it out. You never know if the evenings get cool, I can sit outside on the deck and, um, and work on it, right? The other blanket is, they're both, again, long-term, and they're scrappies, scrappy blankets. This is, and I think I've shown this on a previous knitty video, and I don't have a color printout of it, but it, it is the Habitation Throw. It was free. It's by one of my favorite um, designers, Helen Stewart, uh, Curious Handmade, and she also gave this away for free when COVID started. It is also very good potato chip, popcorn knitting, whatever you want to call it. Very easy peasy. And I decided to turn it into a scrappy blanket. So I use fingering weight yarn, which is a thin like the sock yarn. And when I'm done with those socks, what's ever left over, I'll add to this. And I really should weave in these ends. Um, it started at the bottom and you can see these, and it's kind of getting, it's meant to be a throw um, but I think I am going to, um, oh, I've got a knot there that I got to fix. Um, I'm just going to make it keep going until it's the width I want and then start decreasing. So far, these are all uh, mini colors from Polka Dot Sheep. Amy Alexander here in Whitefish, with the exception of this color I'm working on right now, which is a leftover from Molly Girl Yarn. This was her Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, this is really pretty. She did um, a six month club. She does a lot of music stuff and this was Queen. So that's in that bag. I don't know who this bag is from. I think it's, let's see. Let's see if there's a name on here. There it is. This is by Lone Large Designs. It came with a really cute leather pole and a leaf. So that blanket's in there, and as I finish projects, I add to them. I will, on my next video, gather all the minis that I have purchased separately and show you, uh, show you all those and how I'm going to incorporate them into this blanket and the next one. So the next blanket, again, a Casa Pinka blanket. It is the Blanket of Calm. I don't know what I did with my pattern. There it is. So all it is is it's a bunch of crocheted squares. Right? It's a bunch of granny squares. Um, and I'm using, again, scrap yarn. And I'm probably going to wind up with like three blankets because as I finish with um, any scraps I have to make, the square it takes only two grams of, of sock weight yarn 
to make a granny square. I then, if I have enough, I pass it over to um, the habitation throw. And then I'm also having a pile. Um, I'm eventually gonna do a marled granny stitch crochet blanket. And again, it's another long-term project. It's not like I'm going anywhere. So I these are, I've got 12 so far. My goal, I started a new goal last night, two squares a day. Um, I've got enough minis to continue that. Um, so every morning when I get up and I have my coffee, I sit and I did two squares this morning. So let me take out one. There's ends, which I'm not going to apologize for because I need them to sew them in. So you can see the granny squares. These are very much like the Battenberg blanket that a lot of people are knitting, crocheting as well. It's very mindless. Um, those of us that sit on Zoom calls, we can sit and do it, right? Like with socks. Um, these are different because these are a bit larger. I actually think I have, I wanted to make one for the, here we go. This is the size of the Battenberg. You can see the difference. I wanted to see which I liked better and I actually kind of like the bigger square better. I am going to finish it the way the Battenberg blanket is done. I've used the minis from the same as the Habitation Throw, but I also get a club yarn. It's called Row One Yarns. Um, she puts together, you're going to get some crinkling. I am awfully sorry. Um, and I get it once a month. It's 10, 10 gram minis. So these will probably just go to the squares and I'll figure out what to do with the rest. Um, this is called, it's called the Carnival of Color Club and it comes with all the information on the yarn and the dyer. It's a great way to find new dyers. Um, I think it's a, it's a fabulous way. And they come wound up and you can see they've got the ball bands on them um, that, are, that show the name. Oh, that's a terrible glare, sorry. Um, so anyway, those are wound up and I'm using this package now. Um, let's see, I wound up a couple of them. So I hand wind these because they're really tiny. So that's those. So those are my um, works in progress. I really enjoy the mornings um, here at the house. We have a very active wildlife population. If you follow me on Instagram, I'm Sassy Karen 63 and I post all the pictures from our home. We have elk, we have deer, we have turkey, we have robins, hummingbirds. Um, we have up to 40 hummingbirds. We have our second round of babies that we feed. Um, and I also have um, my buddy, I call him Mr. Gray. We have a great gray owl that hangs out here. Um, apparently we talked to some wildlife biologists in the valley below us. Um, the, the rodent population, um, is not very good. They must be all up at my house because between my cat and Mr. Gray, Gray is feeding himself and a nest somewhere. Um, I've watched him catch voles just like Brandy does, except he doesn't bring him in my house, but he is the most gorgeous, amazing owl I have ever seen. And he's, he starts, you know, sometimes he sits right outside our bedroom window, little voyeur, I guess, um, but he's magical. And the Indian uh, population here says that when an uh, owl comes to visit, it's kind of message. I don't know how true that is. I'm waiting to hear the message, except for the fact that he wants more food. So next up, let me go ahead and show you some new items I got. Um, I did get a bag. Um, because I saw it online and I thought it was just the cutest bag. Um, I typically use, um, only go to like one or two makers for bags because I just know their quality. And um, some friend recommended Cookie and Bees to me. Um, I'll link her below. She's on Instagram, it's Cookie and Bees. But look at this. It's got a great canvas bottom. It's made beautifully, it's a thicker canvas. Um, it's got the pig, the cow, look, there's an alpaca llama, and the bag is huge. Um, you can see, I haven't used it yet, and it's got a great little pocket inside, and it's a drawstring. So I don't know what's going to go in here, um, but we'll see. We'll see. So I wanted to show that to you before I used it. And then I also, um, a while ago, I got some yarn from a woman I've been following, Primrose Yarn, um, for a long time, Kelsey. And I've been wanting to make this shawl. It's called Birds of a Feather. It's by Drea Knits. 
And I printed this one in color so you could actually see how I'm gonna use my yarn. Okay, so let's get out the mohair. So it takes two skeins of this. This is Primrose Yarn Company. This is our single, um, single fingering weight yarn. It's 435 yards, it's 115 grams, so it's a, it's a large, nice size skein. And it's called Smoke and Mirrors. So I love this. If you can see the different, let me pull this apart, you can see the breath, the amazing colors in there. And it's made with two skeins of this, which I have right here. Sorry about the, so I have her two skeins. Sorry about the crinkling. I'll do better next time, okay? And when I'm pairing it with, I finally found some mohair that I like. Um, this is, um, I got this off of webs. Oh, Knit Picks. I'm sorry, Knit Picks. Um, this is their Aloft Lace weight yarn. It is, I believe it's, yeah, it's, it's kid mohair and silk. So this is going to be where the white is, the mohair. So it's going to, I think it's going to be absolutely, let's just do one. Perfect. It's going to be a perfect match. So it's going to be interesting. I've, I've knit with mohair held double with, with, uh, with actual mo with, uh, wool. And I made a beautiful hat that I'll pull out. Um, also a design by Dinah of the knitting place in New York. And I, I held it with, you know, I've never just knit with mo mohair. So that's going to be kind of interesting. I also got another, well, every month I get them. My circus of color. And this one is really interesting. This is um, some fun colors. I didn't take it out of the package yet because I'm not ready to wind it. And this one is by... <laughs> oh, so it also comes with these... The circus of carnival of color comes with this package with her row one label on it. And when you open it... Again, this is all the information about the dyer. This is Teal Torch Knits. Um, and I'm excited to go Google them and check them out. They're based out of Portland, Oregon. And again, it all the it's all wrapped up, and this is all the colorways. So I'm excited. Um, this is also sock yarn because that's what I wanted. And I will be incorporating this, obviously, into my blankets. And then she also has, like, goodies. Um, oh, I came with a cute little stitch marker. This is row one, and it's got a little, I don't know if you can let's see. See it? There's a little butterfly in there. I know, it's backwards. There's the butterfly. So that's exciting. And it came with a little Biscoff biscuit. I wonder if they're going to be serving these on the airlines now since they took away our alcohol. I'm taking the train. Um, so that was one acquisition that I got. And I'll put that over here because I need to keep that together. Uh, the other one, I, I got two orders of yarn. And I have to show you. So I showed you on my um, Hope and Breathe shawl, Stephanie from Asylum Fibers. Here she is again. Um, I noticed I didn't have a lot of DK weight yarn and I wanted to make some hats. So um, I've got, I got two skeins of the Creepy Graffiti separately. Um, so I can make a hat or a shawl or something else with this and incorporate a solid or a tonal in there. I just absolutely love this colorway. I love it. Then I also got um, Dockside which is beautiful. It's a little bit of rose gold as the base, but she's got all these. She's got some yellows and lavenders and blues and teals. And I think it's so pretty. And I'm thinking a hat and then beach umbrella. Um, just love this look. This is all her uh, Merino DK. I have to put on my glasses which are over here. Sorry to tell you exactly the yardage of this. Um, so it's DK, it's 100% superwash Merino, which means it can go in the wash. 231 yards for 100 grams. And this was one of her um, oaks, uh, one of a kinds. So she will not be reproducing this. So I jumped on it. Isn't that great? I love it. Love it so much. And then um, the other one I had is um, 
I watch a YouTube channel with the Grocery Girls. There's a lot of yarn fiber related YouTube channels. It takes me away, it, it keeps me sane. It also keeps my bank account low. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and Tracy Miller of the Grocery Girls had, and her sister have uh, Jody. Jody is Mrs. Brown's bags. I have one of her bags, I'll show that at another time. Uh, they live in Canada, Edmonton, and they have a YouTube channel and they I remember watching them from the beginning. Tracy designed a shawl, and I didn't do this one in color, but I saw when she previewed it, because it came back from the test knitters, it's called Unwind. And as long as it's a paid for pattern, maybe you can see, there it goes, here's some better pictures. That's the Unwind shawl. And I am not really good at picking out colors to do uh, uh, projects with. Um, I typically see a project and I order that color that it came in. Um, I did do a fun job with this one, no birds of a feather. Um, so this, um, I am a blue-green gal, right? You can see it. I've got blues up there. I got blue on my wrist, blue in my ear. I love blue-greens. It goes with um, my silver hair. I just love it. So I ordered the yarn she did the sample in. And this is the first time I am knitting with this yarn. Um, it is made by Moondrake. She is in Oklahoma. These are the colors. Let me show you her ball bands. There's Moondrake yarns. Look at these colors. This one is Ash, and this one is Suraline. I don't know how to say that. I love them. Uh, they're soft. They're 90% superwash merino and 10% linen. I have never knit with linen. So I have projects that I have that I will be getting done. Um, I have um, I have other whips. I need to finish these. Um, I need to bring and next time I'll bring my flax sweater. I've started. Hopefully it'll be further along. Um, and then I've got some projects in these project bags here um, that I need to finish. Well, two of these are starts, and then I need to finish. Um, so that's where I'm at. I've got my mojo back. I didn't have it for a while, um, just because I was so busy. Um, <clears throat> I was working on my business for real estate. I'm an exit realty agent here in Polson, Northwest Montana. Um, I was doing that, and like I said, I have the Safeway job, so I'm, I'm a little busy. I like it. I like. I don't sit well. I retired from my previous career. Um, when I say retired, not with a paycheck, um, but I left my career of 30 years and this is what I decided to do. We live here in Montana. It is beautiful. I love it. And I, I just decided that I don't like sitting. Mike is completely retired. Um, 31 years in the army. It's what he deserves. Um, we'll talk about him another time, but he is a very old soul. It's what I love about him so much. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't sit well. So I got the job. It's 20, 25 hours. Um, I love the people that I work with. They're fabulous. So it gets me out. Um, let's see what else is going on in my life. Getting ready for my son's wedding. I'm excited. My son is getting married in October. And I'm super, super excited. Um, let's see. My daughter is back in the States. And she's settled in her first home. Um, and I can't... This is really her first stable home since she got out of the military. Because she was on a lot of deployments. So her and her boyfriend are happily settled. So this mama is very happy. Uh, my daughter's, they're older, grown and gone. My daughter's 32 and my son is going to be 26 on the 4th of July. Um, so happy mama. You know, when your kids are happy and doing well, um, that that's everything. You know, that relieves a huge burden. I don't care how old they get, I still worry about them. So anyway, um, that's it for today. I wanted to keep this under 30 minutes and I think I'm close to 29. I want everyone to have a great week. I will link everything below. And you can follow me on my YouTube channel, which is Karen Byron, Real Life and Real Estate, Montana. Sorry, Montana Real Life and Real Estate with Karen Byron. That's me. Um, I'm on the Instagram. I'm Sassy Karen. And on Facebook, I'm Sassy Karen. I also have a realtor page. We'll discuss that another time. So anyway, have a fabulous day. I'm going to finish my coffee and I have to head off to work. So have a great day, everybody. And I'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye.